I am proud and thankful that I'm a citizen of the United States of America. But as we read here in Acts chapter 22, I want to read uh, probably just a single verse there, verse 28, Acts chapter 22. I want to talk to you today about our dual citizenship. Thank God I'm a citizen of the United States of America. But also thank God today that I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. Can I hear an amen? And I have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. I am a citizen of heaven today. Not when I die, but today, hallelujah. Bless God. And with that citizenship comes several things. Because of our American citizenship, we enjoy some freedoms. We have some rights, some, some benefits. And with it also comes some duties and responsibilities. Same way with our spiritual citizenship. With it comes some great benefits, some great privileges, and some rights. And also with that heavenly citizenship comes some responsibilities as well, comes some duties as well. Read with me in Acts chapter 22, verse 28. The tribune answered, I bought this citizenship for a large sum. This is the Roman tribune trying to fix him to flog and beat the apostle Paul before he went to trial. And the argument was who's a citizen and who's not. He began to tell them that he was a citizen. And explained to them that they couldn't do this to him. They couldn't treat him like this. I bought this citizenship for a large sum, is what the tribune said. Listen to Paul's words. But I am a citizen by birth. And so those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately. And the tribune also was afraid. For he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had bound him. Father, thank you for your word this morning. God, give us understanding. I pray that your word will bear fruit in our lives. Change us, conform us, God, to your image. In Jesus' name, amen. I am a Roman citizen by birth. How many of you are American citizens by birth? Raise your hand. Do we have any naturalized, any uh, citizens that came here? Huh? Not yet, but you're you still working on it, aren't you? Hey, I, and I'm glad Frank spoke up. I didn't want to point that out, but I, I'm so glad that he pointed that out. And citizenship is so important that, that people are willing to go to great extremes and go through a lot to become a citizen. And, and we don't realize sometimes as Americans, as citizens born in this country, we, we take for granted our citizenship, the rights, the privilege that we have. We don't appreciate them, I don't think, to the degree that we should. And I guarantee you, Brother Frank, when he gets that citizenship, when he stands in that room and they give him the oath of allegiance to this country, it's going to mean something to us. And I appreciate Frank and his efforts to, to go to this, I say trouble, <laughs> go through the, the hoops and pay the money and do all of that. Paul didn't have to do that. Now, back in, in this time in the Roman Empire, they could buy citizenship. They could bribe. They, if you talk to the right leaders, you paid enough money, and it was generally about a year's wages, and you could bribe the leaders, and you could get your citizenship just by simply, as this tribune said, I paid a lot of money for mine. Of course, if you want to become a citizen, it's going to cost you some money. But ask Frank how much, but I don't want to get too personal. <laughs> but it's a lot of, it, it costs you some money. In May 13, 1956, I don't know why I look at my notes. I think I know my birthday. Um, I thought, why am I looking at my notes? May, uh, May 15, 1956. I was born in Dallas, Texas, South Dallas in Oak Cliff. I'm trying to think of the name of the hospital. Chester Clinic is where I was born. It's not there anymore. But I 
I became a citizen of the United States. And I, because of that, get to enjoy all the rights and all the privileges. But as we know, with rank, as they say in the army, uh, rank hath its privileges and rank also hath its responsibilities. We can say the same thing about our citizenship, DJ. It has its responsibilities or privileges. It has rights. We have benefits, but we also have some obligations. We have some duties. We have some responsibilities. I was born again in 1973, hallelujah, in a little south of Dallas in a town called Red Oak, Texas. Red Oak, Texas, in Friday night in the Jesus Power and Light Coffee House, I became a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Woo! And I, because of that, get to enjoy all the rights and responsibilities, enjoy the benefits, but with that also come some duties and responsibilities. And I believe that too many of us as believers live way below our potential as citizens, both of our country and those of us that are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. I say that as citizens because the majority of Americans don't vote. That is just one right, that's one privilege that we have as citizens that we don't take advantage of. And there's people we see in these other countries that have become democratic and they give, they, they die, they die, they die, they die for the chance to cast a vote. And this is a little bit, I guess, on my, on my horse this morning. I think it's a grave irresponsibility not to vote in America. I, I feel that I'm, it's very personal. I mean, I have real close friends that have died in, in service to our country. Many of you, and I know some other people, and many of you as well. Too many lives have been sacrificed for the privilege to vote. Oh, it takes some time to learn. It takes some time to get involved. It does take some time. And we're so busy to learn. And, and, and so we don't feel educated enough. We don't know what to do. And so uh, we, most of us don't go to the polls. That's just the, the, the fact. And so as a result of our not fulfilling that responsibility and, in, and, and really enjoying the right that we have to vote, we suffer the consequences. People that are in office today wouldn't be in office today if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ would get off of its rumpus dumpus and go to the polls and vote. Amen. I get a little rough there, Phil. I mean, moving right along. But it is something very personal. And I know it is to many of you as well. So let me just take this time to encourage you to vote. Election coming up, and uh, that's all I'll say. Take advantage of your right. Jesus paid a great price so that we can be citizens of heaven. But all too often, just like in America, we don't we live below our rights. We live below our, our privileges, and we don't take advantage of what we have as a citizen of heaven, the benefits that we have. I I love that Paul was like, he he told this Roman official, yeah, you got yours, you paid for yours. (laughs) I was born. You know what, at that words, they had to leave, they had to leave him alone. And I I think we need to come, when, when when our enemy comes to us, we need to say, hey, 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 devil, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. The greater one lives in me, praise God. And I believe just like this Roman official, the devil's got to leave you alone. In the sense that, that, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't put up with what you put up with. You need to declare in Jesus' name who you are. And God lives in me. I submit myself to God. I resist the devil, and he'll flee. These Roman people, whoa, they're taking their hands off. And you need to stand up and tell the devil who you are, remind him who you are, and because of that citizenship, because of the price that Jesus paid, I have power over the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be gone. 
You can't do to me what you want to do to me. It was against the law for them to flog and scourge to beat a Roman citizen before he was put to trial. Now, non-citizens, they treated them very maliciously, and they beat them and, and flogged them before the trial. I say before the trial. That's what the devil wants to do to us. He wants to beat us down and beat us down and beat us down. We need to remind, whoa, 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 whoa. And we need to realize who we are. We need to realize because of our citizenship what we have. Can I hear an amen? You can't buy it. You can't pay bribes for it. I don't care how many years you work for it. It's free. Hallelujah. Salvation is free. Bless God. You can't bribe it. You can't buy it. You got to come through the door. Amen. And the door is Jesus. I say, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by and through me, Jesus said. Praise God. And this citizenship with it brings a lot of freedom. You see, that's what Paul experienced. That citizenship brought him freedom. It says they realized that they had bound him, but they withdrew from him immediately. They let him go. I'm here to tell you something. That you can speak to the devil and command him to let you go. You see, we, were, we are free through Christ, but too many of us live bound lives. Devil, you can't treat me any way that you want to. You may treat others that way, but I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is my God. And he is greater than my enemy. Colossians chapter 1. Let's see, I got some notes somewhere. What is freedom? It's the state of being free or at liberty rather than in confinement or under physical restraints. Jesus set us free. I don't believe that. I don't know who misspelled that, but. Can't blame it on Judy. I don't want Judy to anyway thank you. By the way, I've been meaning to say, this is good of it, and, and welcome Judy as our secretary. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tina uh, got other things going and, and just just quickly to say she she's just busy. Got in her words, got too many irons in the fire and wanted the freedom. She's gonna they're gonna travel a little bit. She's got another business going on and some other things in, in her life and so I appreciate Judy stepping in there and, and uh, filling that responsibility. Tom is, no, he's, I think he's more than an assistant. But we won't go there, amen. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Judy. But I, I do want to clarify, she did not type these slides. So there is uh, exemption, that's what that is, from external control. You see, you don't have to be controlled by the devil anymore. You don't have to be controlled by sin nature anymore. And, and too many people who live below that because we've been deceived in believing, well, I'm just a human being. That is absolutely false. As a believer, you're not just a human being. You are a man for sure. You are a human being. Don't get me wrong. But you have been endowed and given the very spirit and the very nature and the very seed of God lives in you. That's more than just a human Amen. That's more than just a human. So we are exempt from external control, from Satan's control. The absence of restrictions are an opportunity to exercise one's rights. You hear me? Opportunity. It's not just freedom that I don't have to do that, what Satan wants me to do, what my desires tell me to do, what my impulses tell me to do, what my sin nature tells me to do. I don't have to do that. I'm not under that dominion anymore. I've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. I'm a citizen of heaven. But I also have the freedom from that, but I also have the liberty to do this. I have the liberty to do what God wants me to do. I have the liberty to serve God. I have the liberty to serve righteousness. Can I hear an amen this morning? Praise God. Now, we are free, but we're not independent. There's a little bit of difference. Independence is the freedom from the control, the influence, the support, the aid of anyone else. 
Now, as a Christian, I don't want to be independent because my dependence is on who? God, my source, my sufficiency, my all in all. I'm free, but I'm dependent. I'm dependent. God is my sufficiency. Without him, I can do a little bit. No, I can do nothing. So therefore, we've got to see that I am wholly and completely dependent on God. There's where we get into trouble. That's why he says, submit yourself to God. I'm under his authority. I'm under his dependence. He's my source. I've got power because of my relationship with him, my dependence upon him. I don't want to be free from his control and from his influence. That's selfishness. Too many Christians and non-Christians are just living their life of independence. And so to be free, got this from the Greek dictionary, simply means to be unrestrained, liberated. I tell you, the greatest freedom, I appreciate my freedom as an American, the freedom that we have to vote, the freedom that I have in this country to live here and to work here. The freedom I have to enter and to leave the United States. These are rights that, US, that only U.S. citizens have. The right to vote. The right to run for public office. No, anybody want to do it? No, I'm kidding. To go at pleasure. Mm. And I appreciate that freedom as American. But there's nothing like being free in your spirit. There's nothing like the freedom from the sin that grasp the unbeliever. Not free to go at pleasure because they obey the lust of your sinful nature. Amen? But believers, citizens of heaven, they can go at pleasure. They can obey God. I am free from the clutches of sin and I am at liberty to serve the living God. The devil doesn't have the right to beat me up and condemn me and destroy me. Because I'm a child of God. Hello out there. Believe it? Say amen. amen. Acts twenty-two twenty-eight. 28. And so then, you're no longer strangers and aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God. Whew. I'm thankful for my American citizens, but I'm just overwhelmingly grateful. And I, and I am. I don't... I don't want to belittle that at all. But I guarantee you, until you're free in Christ, you're bound. You're a bound American. You hear me? Until you're free in Christ. You may have the freedom to vote. You may have the freedom to live here and work here. You may have the freedom to go and come in our, from our country. And you may have the freedom to run for public office. But until you get free in Christ, you're bound to your sin. You need to be liberated. Amen? You need to be set free by his power. Philippians 3.20, our citizenship is in heaven. Woo, and from it, we await our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's delivered us from the domain of darkness. Jesus delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, from that domain and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Look with me in well, Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 and 5. In order to free us from this present evil world, freedom, freedom, freedom. Christ took the punishment of our sins because that was what our God and Father wanted. You see, he purchased your freedom. That's what redemption is. He paid the price to buy you back. Thank God for our American citizenship. And it gives us rights and freedoms in this country. But I thank Jesus because he paid the price in his own blood. Not the blood of goats and bulls and rams, but with his own precious blood. And That's why we need to take advantage. We don't need to live lightly below our potential. Because too, just like in America, too many lives... Over a million, nearly a million and a half men and women have died, a million and a half, defending that freedom. We've got to rise up 
and take advantage of those rights and privileges and also the duties that come with it. One of the duties of a citizen is what? Jury duty. Jury duty. We are privileged to serve on a jury. Thank God we have juries in our country. And I know I got one the other day, and my first thought was, ah. And I had to repent. Whoa. This is a this is a duty that I have because of the rights and privileges and benefits I have. This is one of the duties. And we need to serve faithfully, and we need to serve thankfully. So goes the church. Oh, we've talked about those rights we have and privileges we have. We have power over the enemy. I say we have power over the enemy in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, there's no longer you don't have to serve your sin. We're going to look at that a little bit more. But with that also comes some duties. What are some of your duties as a believer? Okay. To gather together. To love. To support. To pray. To to communicate that gospel. We have a responsibility to go and preach the word. It's not just for, we're, we're all evangelists. And the duty that you have is to declare who you are, who God is. Look what the Lord hath done and tell other people the goodness of God. That is a duty you have. It's a privilege as well. But if you look at it, man, I get to do that. I don't, I don't have to go witness. You need to get saved if that's your problem. <laughs> Woo, I'm telling you, when the light's shining, you want to, how can I not tell anybody? How can I not say God is good? I was thinking yesterday, telling the lady at birth with the good news. I want to give me a t-shirt and say, have you heard the good news? But I want people to say, what, what's the, what, 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 what's the news? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I love to tell people, how you doing? I said, I'm good, but I'm going to get over it. Because <laughs> God didn't save me to be good. He saved me to be great. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, I tell you what. Yeah, I had too much caffeine this morning. I don't know what it is. Oh, I tell you, I got up drunk a little wine, new, new wine this morning. Uh, may clarify that. New wine. Amen. Woo, the spirit of the living God. Praise God. So thankful that I'm free today. I was bound by my sin, but now I'm free. Romans 6, 1. Let's turn there together before we conclude this morning. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Dead to sin, alive to God. I think um, it's in verse 1. But let me begin in verse 1 and read a little bit there. Can we do that this morning? The Word of God. You know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus? We're baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. In order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Thank you, Jesus. For if we have been united with him in the death, like his, we shall be certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be destroyed or brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Are you hearing the word this morning? This is the truth that you died with Christ, buried with him by baptism into his death and raised to walk in newness of life. That resurrection power that lives in you enables you to live in newness of life. Freedom from that sin. You're no longer enslaved. Let's just let the word speak this morning. For we know... Mm-hmm. 
Oh, if we've been united with him in death, we'll certainly be united with the resurrection. The one who has died, verse 7, has been set free from sin. Mm. My message to you this morning is you're, free, you're, you're set free from sin. Part of the benefit, one of the greatest ones, I want to emphasize this morning, that your citizenship in the kingdom of heaven through Jesus Christ and what he paid purchased your freedom from sin. Jesus primarily dealt with a sin problem. He says, I behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Taketh away the sin of the world. Taketh away the sin of the world. Listen to me. Read it again right here. One who's died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we'll also live with him. And we know, verse 9, that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. The life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. Verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body and make you obey its passions. Everybody should say amen whether you feel like it or not. Don't let it. Who gets, whose choice is it? It's yours. See, the procurement has been paid. The salvation has been received. And then you have to make a choice. Am I going to live according to the power that's in me? Amen? Free, free from being a slave to sin. The greatest, one of the greatest lies that the devil will tell you is that, well, you just, you just have to put up with this or, or that. That sin, that habit, that nature. I'm here to tell you this morning by the authority of the Word of God, you don't just have to put up with sin. You know what you do? You put to death. Amen? I say, I'm telling you this morning, in that sin that we grapple with, that we, we wrestle with, in the name of Jesus, can be dealt with by the blood by the cross. And you reckon yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. Let not sin, therefore, verse 12, reign in your mortal body. Mm. Don't present your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness. Present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your member brought in your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you're not under the law, but under grace. Mm. Verse 22, we could read on, but verse 22 says, we've been made free from sin. Therefore, you become the servants of God. Our citizenship is in heaven. One of the greatest benefits that we have is to be able to live free from the power and the clutches of and the dominion of sin. And too many of us live below that truth. And we allow Satan to do to us what the Roman official was going to do to Paul. But Paul realized, wait a minute, I need to let them know who I am. Woo! I need to make sure they understand what they're fixing to do is against the law. Hallelujah. It's against the law of grace for the devil to have his way in your life. It's against the law of grace for the devil to beat you up and condemn you and try to, well, he'll try to, but it's against the law of grace for him to succeed in it because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for the power that you've given us. The benefit of our citizenship is to live free from the power of sin. One more scripture. Let's read together. Turn to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Glory to God. When do you think your citizenship is going to come, Frank? How much longer you got? Just need some need some moolah, huh? <laughs> wow. 
Yeah. Oh, I think about that and just the cost and the time and the, the effort. And he's doing all of that. And it didn't cost me nothing. 1956, I was born, and, and, and actually, I guess when I got 18, legally, you know, you're not a full citizen until you're 18. You know that? But I, I'm just, I mean, it just makes me so thankful to know that those benefits, and then I, then I recognize the million and a half men and women, soldiers that have died over the years of our country to, to maintain that so I can practice my citizenship and enjoy that freedom. Mm. Look with me in 1 John. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 3. Let's begin in verse 6. I said one scripture, I meant a passage. Amen. First John 3. No one who abides in Christ keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. I want you to see the gravity of this. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning, and the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of Of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. I'm so glad Siebert didn't write these words today. Nor is the one who does not love his brother. My, 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 my. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't ever sin. Okay? And, and the, the, the verbiage here is important. Doesn't keep on sinning. You understand? It's a present participle. It's practice sin. Sin is not your way of life. Sin is an exception in your life. Hallelujah! Because of who God is and what he's done and your citizenship, you're transferred out of the kingdom of darkness. You're endowed with his power, his glory. His seed is in you. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And therefore, we have power over sin in our life. And again, don't... your pastor sins. All right, let's just lay it in case you didn't know. <laughs> I know that's a surprise to, to, to most of you. <laughs> hey! But I, I guarantee you, and I'll say that it's not, a practice, it's not a way of life. It's not a habitual thing. Okay? And when I do, in the conviction, in the God forgive, that's living a Christian life. Amen? That's living a Christian life. Living a life of repentance. And a life of, oh God, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Hallelujah. Woo! He's faithful and just. Forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so when we do mess up, when we do trip, we get down on our knees and say, oh God, forgive me. We don't say, well, who cares? It's my life. I'll do what I want to. Who are you to tell me, pastor, how to live my life? The Word of God tells you how to live your life. The Word of the living God. And I'll stand here till the day I die and tell you that the word is truth. And sin is sin. And we need to call it what it is. Because we live too far below our potential as citizens 
of the kingdom of heaven. Just like America, so much blood has been paid and spilled. We need to take advantage of those rights, those privileges, and we need to fulfill our duties as citizens of America. But our citizenship in heaven, and in America we take of allegiance, we stand and we pledge allegiance to this flag. Don't we? Mm -hmm. And with it comes duties and responsibilities. And in our Christian life, we stand, or excuse me, we kneel, and we pledge our allegiance to Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Thank God for the rights. Thank God for the privileges. Thank God for the benefits. And thank God for the duties and the responsibilities that come with it. Stand with me.